Welcome back to our YouTube channel. We are sleepy moms. <laughs> I woke up with a headache this morning. I'm just I was tired. Like, I couldn't even function at work. How tired I was. I didn't even go to bed that night. Oh, yeah. We went. Yes, we did. We went a bit after two thirty. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. For today's video, we're going to be talking about what it's like for us to be single moms. So stay tuned. I want to talk about something really quick before we actually get into this video that's actually been on my mind. It's been really bothering me. Um, because we're the moms and because like our kids live with us 80% of the time. Our kids go with the other parent on the weekend and it's like we have to do all the disciplining all the cooking all the cleaning all the making sure that they go to school and it's like by the time the weekend comes it's like it's so exhausting that it's like of course we want time to ourselves and our we're known as to be we're known to be like the the disciplinary parent and the one that gets everything done but when it comes to the fun stuff like our kids don't see us that way and that is so hurtful that I had to hear my son say that the other day like well, we don't do anything and blah, blah blah and it's like well we have all these other things that need to get done right as part of like functioning to making sure that you know you go to school and the house gets cleaned and dinner gets cooked and homework is done and all that stuff that it's just kind of like yeah i'm not always up for it like i do need some time for myself and i think i think at times i could feel kind of selfish but at the same time it's like well where do you where do you find time and i think that's going to look different for everybody but at the same time it's like it's a little bit hurtful that it's like well mom you suck on the weekends or I don't want to spend time with you I'd rather be with like the other family because they're more fun but I don't know it's just that's been on my mind a lot recently and it's been hurtful and I think I need to make a more concerted effort to like do the more fun stuff too on top of all my motherly duties um but yeah how do you feel about it I, I don't think I ever really thought about it up until you brought it up just because I'm currently working two jobs, so it doesn't even cross my mind at the moment because all I ate everything was like I have to work. Me, but she has told me like, in a sense of like I don't want to stay with you because it's boring here. Yeah, I've heard her say that too. And I'm just like, girl, I'm not boring. You feel like you're doing enough by providing for them and working and caring for them and feeding them, and then you know you hear something like that on top of it, it's like wow. Yeah, yeah, it really hurt my feelings to have to hear that, like, and I know that, like, I'm the only person that can change that narrative, and I'm the only person that can change how I feel about it. All right, just to set the context, um, I have been a single mom for as long as my son has been alive, so he just turned 13, so 13 years. And I recently became a single mom shortly after I got divorced, so it's a little, I would say a little over a year already so I have my son Jacob I have full custody of him which means that he lives with me full-time um, and on the weekends he should see his dad but he actually does it and he actually goes to his grandma's house so on the weekends he'll go to his grandma's house he spends almost every weekend there um, if his dad does want to see him he has to go to his grandma's house but I don't they don't spend a whole lot of time together so that sucks um, but you know it's 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 a really it's a tricky thing to navigate when it's like okay I need some time off but then the guilt seeps in and it's like okay I, I also need to like spend fun time like what I was mentioning earlier like fun time with you too so that's my situation right now and with in my situation I have physical custody of my daughter and she lives with me but she spends I would say almost every weekend starting Friday with her dad. Her dad is actually very involved. Um, he's there for her. He interacts with her. He's very involved in her life, which is a really good thing because um, she's really close to both of us. Um, it's really nice because we help out each other out when it comes to balancing um, her school activities, the weekends. Um, we have pretty good communication and it's worked out pretty good for us so for me I think in general I feel like my son's dad has always been like a yo-yo in his life and he's never been like a steady like person in his life where he feels like he can count on him 100% um, 
I think my son feels like the relationship is fragile, like, oh, I won't see him for a while, or if he gets upset, I'm not going to be able to see him, stuff like that. And um, obviously that's going to have like some mental and emotional toll on my son, and um, it sucks. It fucking sucks. It fucking sucks to have to see that all that stuff playing out, and for the other parent not to realize like how much damage they're causing to a young child, you know, because he's, he's little, he's a baby. He's still waving to me. And it's like, you're not understanding like he's still growing despite the fact that he just turned 13. It's like he wants love. Everybody wants love. And he's not being showing the love that he wants from his dad. It hit me like a ton of bricks just trying to juggle being a single mom and, you know, going from having somebody here helping you to being like, well, I have to do this and that and this and that. And it, it's hard. It was really hard. It is hard. And, um, you know, like going back to what you said, like you, us having to juggle with all the things we have to do throughout the week, meal planning, getting them to school, and then, you know, them being the fun parents, like that's, I feel like at the end of the day, it all falls on us. You're sick, we gotta stay home. They call us from school, we gotta go pick them up. Mm -hmm. Something happened at school, we gotta go meet with them. Meetings, doctor's appointments, dentist appointments, it's like, we're there on the front line all the time. Mm -hmm. And I try to get her, her dad involved as much too, but I feel like at the end of the day, it's usually, it's usually us. You gotta do it, mom. Mm -hmm. You know? That's the first person anybody ever looks for anywhere is mom. They're never like, where's dad? Yeah, I think like dad true. comes second and it's not, it's just always been mom. That is true. And it's interesting you say that because I feel like for me, it's all I've known. For the past 15 years that Jacob's been alive, like, that is all I've known. I don't know what it's like to have a partner and actually be like, you have somebody that you can rely on and be like, hey, I didn't get a chance to do the laundry. Can you make sure you get it done? Because, you know, our kid doesn't have any clean uniforms for school tomorrow. Or, you know, or can you cook dinner because I'm tired? Yeah. But you know what's you know what's interesting about that though? I think we've learned how to do that for each other. Yeah. Just a lot of different scenarios that it's like I don't have anybody else to rely on other than my sister. Um and it and it sucks. It sucks. It fucking sucks because I believe it's like it should be 50-50, but that's not the way the world works and we don't live in an ideal world where it's like the parent is there. At least not my son's dad. He's never had to pick him up from school. He's never had to take him to the doctor. He's, I've always done those things. And but why? I, I think you learn to, why have I done it? Because he chooses not to be involved. He chooses not to be involved. Um, and it was funny because one time we were having a conversation and like Jacob had some like parent conference or like back to school night or something. And his dad had the audacity to be like, well, why didn't you call me to tell me? And my, my initial thought is like, well, do I look like your personal secretary? You know what school he goes to. All you have to do is just call them up, look up the schedule on the internet, you know, the yearly academic school schedule, and you'll know everything he's doing, everything. And his excuse was always like, why well, you don't tell me these things? Well, I'm nobody's fucking cha-cha, so you better figure that shit out. Excuse me, like, I don't have time for this. I don't have time to be, like, calling you or texting you and being like, um, I need to update you on X, Y, and Z. Or not just even that, for him to be like, give me a rundown. Tell me how he's doing, you know? Just asking. Just That's it. It's just asking. You know, it, it's, it's bad enough we're constantly telling the kids what to do. Being like, you know, finish your homework or wash the dishes or, you know, do this and that. But you still need to make more time to be like, Hey, fulano de tal, this is what's going on in your child's life. Like, yeah, no, I mean, that's just, I ain't about that. It's, about to me, that. it's just a damn sorry excuse. I was like, at I the end of the day, that. people are going to make time for what they want. And if it's not a priority, then it's just not. And that's it. It's simple communication. That's all it is. All it is. Yeah, and like for whatever reason, for whatever fucking lame excuse he has, it's like, at the end of the day, you know how to reach your son. You know how to communicate with him. If you really cared about him and you really wanted to have like a really good relationship with him, it's like all you have to do is ask him about what he likes and what he does and what are the things that he enjoys and how he's doing in school. 
and kids will tell you everything that's all they want that's all they want they just want to be heard you know and unfortunately like we have to do all of that work we have to do all the mental work all the emotional work all the labor work everything and sometimes also be the other parent sometimes also be the dad at least that's how i feel like i'm a mom and a dad you know and i know that for and i know that it's not the same with the a, a male with the boy to be like oh i could try to fulfill some of these voids that you have from your dad it's it's not the same yeah that they just at the end of the day that they feel loved and heard that's you know and that they know that we're here for them no matter what i feel like i make that very clear i know for a fact that it's like affected jacob tremendously i think the way it would affect any boy who doesn't have like a good father figure in their life um and i think for jacob like when um my brother-in-law her ex-husband used to live with us i think he was like a good you know stable person in his life that was a that was a male figure um but since the divorce that's also changed too and it's like yeah. he can't rely on him anymore um so that really sucks but um at the same time it's just like it shouldn't have to be somebody else it should be his dad that's true um, and so in saying all of that, the reason why I said that I know for a fact is because Jacob actually wrote, um, a paper at school that I had a chance to read during back to school night that he said that, why can't his dad just be a good dad? And he's like pretty much in the letter, like he's saying like, why can't you be a good parent? Like, why don't you care for me? Why don't you love, for, why don't you love me? And that is so hurtful to have to hear, to have to like read and think like he doesn't talk about those feelings and he doesn't share them often um but it's inevitable that it's gonna affect him on an emotional level the fact that his dad's not there so that was so heart-wrenching and it was so hard to read and i was like crying as i was reading it at his school and it just like hurt so much that it's like i can't teach the other parent how to be a good parent i can't tell him like hey you know what you need to fucking step it up because boy have i tried um, but at the end of the day, it's, it's that person, it's that person. And I can't force his dad to be a good parent. I can't force him to be like, Hey, you know what? You need to do X, Y, and Z. If those things genuinely came out of him, he would do them. Period. I would say shortly after the divorce, it really affected Danica a lot. Um, we are just really close with Danica. We're very open. Um, our family dynamic was, it, it was great. At one point it was great. And, um, when she found out that we were going to get, when we told her that we got divorced, that we're going to get divorced, it, it just like, it just shattered her. She had this image of us being together forever and, you know, the times we would spend and how much fun we would have. And for that to go away was heartbreaking for her. Um, and it was really hard to even just talk to her about it um, because she wasn't understanding why it was happening. She was, for her, it was just kind of like, we went from being together and now you guys just don't want to be with each other anymore. It was kind of like, why? Because she was very hopeful that we we're going to get back together. And she would ask us that about that a lot. And I had to have, I had to have a very, several conversations with her about that. I mean, like, and it took her a while. It took her a while for her to, to realize that been like, my mom and dad love me, but they're not going to get back together. You know, and, and it was even hurtful, hurtful to hear to be like, why don't you want to be with my dad? Or why don't you guys love each other anymore? And I feel like as much as I wanted to explain those things to her, I just, I couldn't at the moment. It was just hard at times when she would ask these questions just to put it in words because it would get me so emotional. Shortly after the divorce, she really needed both of us. And I'm glad he was there to talk to her and just to be there for her whenever she needed him. Um, and I think the last thing that I would say is like having a good support system, regardless of what that looks like. It's not always going to be family. Like it could be friends. It can be, you know, other people in your life. Um, and that's that could be tricky to navigate around, you know. Cause some people don't even have it as I can imagine. Um, but I think fortunately for us, we've always lived together and it's like, we know that we can physically count on each other yeah. to get things done. 
it's really nice to be able to be like, my sister could do that for me. So thank you for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. Um, please share with us in the comments um, or on Instagram what motherhood has been like for you, um, your ups and downs. Um, our kids are almost adults. My son will be 18 in five years. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> Uh, so please let us know. We hope you've enjoyed and we will see you in our next video. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Bye! Bye.